Hey, this is Christian Buckley coming live from ESPC 23 here in Amsterdam. And uh, so Christian Buckley, MVP RD, I'm with Rencore and introductions. Hello, I'm Kevin McDonald. I'm the, an MVP as well, co-host of the Copilot Connection podcast and solutions architect at Avanas. Stop your chuckling already, Toby. <laughs> this is going to go well. This is going to be so much fun. Tracy van der Sky from South Africa. I'm used to this. Have family, have brothers and sisters. I'm totally used to this. And I'm uh, very excited to be at ESPC3 in Amsterdam. And then, of course, the beautiful Tony on my left. <laughs> Tony Redmond, that's all I'm saying about myself. <laughs> so we had a great keynote this morning. The, 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 we had the keynote this morning with uh, Jeff Teeper and the cast of thousands, of course, they're going through. What were your primary takeaways? Like what stood out to you about the keynote this morning? I'll start before Tony jumps in on that. Um, Copilot's going to be big. It's going to be everything. It's going to be in every little bit you've got. And what wasn't in the keynote was that you're going to pay for it as well. So uh, looking mm -hmm. forward to more stories coming out from that. But uh, for me, I find that Copilot will transform things. It's making life easier for so many people when you get the habit of doing it. And it's going to be there whether you like it or not. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, uh, Christian, of course, I'm always the cynical one. So there is a dark side to technology. And uh, I do think it's, it's all and wonderful, all the bells and whistles, all that beautiful videos, the colors are vibrant, it's awesome, is that uh, I know millions of people will not be able to use that if they aren't trained well. So it's easy to look at that, but I mean, people are still struggling to use OneDrive and OneNote and, uh, and SharePoint. So, so again, it's an amazing technology, but the companies need to know that people need to be trained to use those technologies that don't work on their own. Because products don't fix problems, people fix problems with products. That's my thoughts. Thank you. I'm with you on that. I, I think... Uh, Oh my gosh! <laughs> it was like uh, it was like propaganda 101 there today. You know, let's it's a marketing it. keynote though. It was terrible. It was terrible because it didn't mention any practical details, like how much you're going to have to pay for it, why you're going to have to upgrade all your licenses, why? I mean, why you can't use it with Office 365 E5? I mean, why? Microsoft has not been able to answer that, that question. No, you, tell me why. Go on, tell me why. Yeah. Money. Oh yeah, it's all about money. Yeah. This is all about A or P U. Them investing in the. Data no, no, no. Well. It's all about A or P U. How much? What is the average revenue per user I can extract? Yeah. Over the next twenty years. That's what it is. So uh, to me, it was a pretty much a waste of space today. Sorry. So I, I, to me, yes, it's about money, but it's the investment Microsoft built, new data centers, they're buying all of the NVIDIA chips, they've got to find a way to get the, the money back from that, and it's going to be licensing, the money doesn't come from nowhere, the cost that we've got give you those existing services, they're putting new things, they're going to add on to that, and, and I think, for me, the number of companies that already signed up for that early access preview, they've paid to get a preview, people want yeah. this stuff, yeah. you would be mad to give it away for free, if people are willing to pay for it. So you get to put there, those things in there. I, there was I, an I interesting it stat. Cascades down. There, there was an interesting stat that, that Teeper mentioned as well. They said, you know, 80% of the people that are using the early preview version of, of Copilot, they're saying, I can't live without this capability. Yeah. And it's actually 77%. I know, I know what the actual round. number is, yeah. okay. but right. 77% right. of some very cur uh, carefully curated corporate users now, who have been Microsoft for years and years and years. And you know, the $108,000 that they paid to be part of the program, I mean, that is just, that's just a rounding error in the, uh, the business that these people do with Microsoft. So I don't think there's anything to, but, anything so, to the same with the license. So the, the, oh, you know, the, let's go back to another point you made. Yeah. Microsoft is investing billions of dollars. Yes. In fact, in their Q3 results, I believe the figure that the Amy Hood gave out was 10.7 billion in that quarter. Okay, so that's a lot of money. But nobody, customers didn't ask Microsoft to invest that money. Microsoft made that, that decision, sure. okay? And now we're rewarded by a barrage of co-pilot everywhere. I have no doubt that AI is important. Absolutely, it's important. I have no doubt that AI will help people, but my gosh. I mean, 
uh, to listen to the way truth and light is proclaimed on the platform this morning, it's just, it's not there. I'm sorry, this is not practical. Well, that's, a, that's always the, the hard part. It's like there's the innovation, the new products, the new features that are out there, and it does take time for it to be absorbed and adjusted to of what this actually looks like. I, I had a conversation with, with an organization uh, I was at an event a week and a half ago in Orlando, and we're talking about, it says they, they have about 150 people. So they're not eligible for the 300 person threshold for that. They're saying, what about us? Like we have huge need for this. The and, and size- it's a shame Jeff didn't address that at all. The, that, the that size of an organization does not determine the complexity of their collaboration needs and requirements and the massive amounts of data that are being created. So I, I just think it's a matter of time for that to be figured out. What? figure is purely arbitrary oh, yeah. and it's it's yeah. it's a start yeah. I mean 300 doesn't work at all in the United States for example because all of the big organizations are well over 300 but in smaller countries 300 could represent a very big yeah. company you know? right yeah. so this is going to change absolutely what I what's not going to change is pricing and what's not going to change is all the stuff around it which is fundamentally understanding the technology and how to use the technology. And I don't think Microsoft has done a good job yet of quite explaining how to do that. But, but then uh, one thing, and I think this, you raised that point of its adoption, it's getting people doing it. The point of conferences like this is you want to hear that great word from Microsoft, that big shiny story, and then you've got the real community story from the speakers who are coming here to add into that, to address that. And that's- Which, which that's is just gonna take time. It's gonna take time to do that. And we're gonna need, yeah. I mean, because it's just, it just went GA, you know, of course you have the preview, you've got the early people in it. To your point, Tony, it's like, we need to have real users, real companies that have, you know, yeah. well, others to get in there, to play with it, to kick to the tires, now, right? To, to kick the tires, to have access to that, to then to start to share those yeah. practical application of that new technology. But, but also the reality is that a lot of this is doing the things that we've been telling people to do for a long time. Put in governance, do your information management. Suddenly, and what I love about Copilot is you can go and speak to CEO and say, yeah, to get Copilot, you need to work out your data. You need to govern this stuff. You need to speak to different vendors to bring this in which is the message that many of us have been showing for years, yeah. suddenly it's getting heard at a different level. Yeah. And that, that to me is one of the benefits we're gonna see. I hope out of this is people start to tidy some of their stuff up at least. You, you know the parallel that I bring up is, you remember when fast search was integrated in, so this, around the SharePoint 2010, no, we, heard, young, we, we heard so many people say, you remember this Tony, they say like, well search is broken. <laughs> I just say that we've been in this space for a long time. We're not sure where you're going with us. <laughs> so, anyway. Not very inclusive. No, not at all. But over to you, Sorry, okay. Search. Anyway, so uh, with Fast Search, you had organizations. Yeah, that's right. Long time ago, uh, when Fast Search was integrated, people, customers would say, well, search is broken. It's like, well, no, what it was highlighting, it was working better and that it was highlighting that they had lax security measures, that they weren't thinking about the classification and cleaning up their data and their permission structures. And I think AI is going to do that all over again. It's going to highlight areas of improvement in organizations and how they're managing their data. I think one of the reasons why in, when you're looking at Microsoft's approach for Copilot, and they talk about the word governance. It's not about the broad governance needs of everything within Microsoft 365. They're specifically talking about governance of the data that's accessed via the, the AI. Yeah. So this comes back, just bring back to the keynote. Yeah. My big disappointment about the keynote was a, a total lack of practicality. You didn't give anybody going out of that room today some actions that they needed to go and do to prepare for the accelerating factor that AI will bring. Now, let's go back to the, the mist of times again and remember Dell. It was Dell that caused all of the problems as far as people suddenly found out that their sharing and SharePoint was perhaps a little mist yeah. all over the place. A skew, yes. Right. Now, there's a big difference. There's a big difference between highlighting documents that you might be interested in, which is what Dell does, and consuming documents. Which is what co-pilot was. Yeah. yeah. 
that's going to be very, very, very interesting. So here's a whole different topic. It's like what, uh, again, with it, this keynote talked around it. It's the evolution of the user experience and how we're interacting with the yeah. technology. I mean, it, it is fundamentally different, this, what we're entering into this era of AI-based productivity solutions. Uh, is it? I, I mean, I'm still trying to get my head around having to pay an extra 56 bucks a month to get nicer PowerPoint and pivot tables. Pricing aside. I'm still, it's like, still a fundamental issue for organizations. I mean, you've got to go to the CIO and say, I'll be able to make a case. And I have seen nothing yet that convinces me about extra productivity. I really haven't. Yeah. I mean, I can see it myself. I tell you, being able to summarize a team's meeting, that's yeah, pretty that, good. That's yeah. being, a, being able to summarize an email thread, that's pretty good as well. But some of the other stuff, uh, you know, hmm. Mm. So I, I've, I've been using Microsoft 365 Copilot for about two months now. I can tell you last week, I had a sudden uh, drop, drop to me, a presentation. I went, you know, usually I like to make these things good. I haven't found Copilot amazing at doing it, but I'm just going to do it. Blank page said, create this. I want to talk about these topics created me 10 slides, did a bit of tweak. It was enough to get me going and get me over that. I would have an awful looking session if I hadn't done that. Do I see it all the time with PowerPoint? No, I, I, I get you there, it's not perfect. But for me, the meetings, uh, I know when I go back, I'm gonna go back and say, can you summarize the uh, chats and uh, the emails that I've missed in the last week? Pick the key topics that I can go back on. And that, that would save me two hours. So, and yeah. that two hours, if I do that on a regular basis, easily covers the, the license cost for it. So I have seen that number and it's right, reality. It's meeting chat of some of the meetings I've been at might not be, might not <laughs> take much we're intelligence. Sorry. It does build <laughs> the swear words, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks yeah. be to God. <laughs> I think I just, I just want to mention again is that we're getting excited. We're standing here getting excited about technology. They're excited. They're excited. Yeah, we're not the same. <laughs> but, again, the bigger audience are people that still navigate through stuff. I, I just keep on saying this. These are people that still navigate through folders. They're people yeah. that still create yeah. folders in their inboxes. Yeah. This, the, the subset of users that are going to get value from this is extremely small. Yeah. So, just quickly tell me, where did $30 become $57? I just like heard you say that. Excuse 30, me. 30 bucks yes. for Copilot. Yes. Plus 26 to upgrade from Office 365. Oh, of course. Yeah. E3 to E5. So, yeah. yeah. You're right. That's, okay. That's, so yeah. I get a, you got to put yeah. the costs on the table, boys. So but fifty-seven. No, e three. I mean, yeah. the, the interesting thing, if you go and take, if you take, sorry, thank you. If you take the Office three six five e three product scoop, yeah. And you look at all the service plans. There are thirty-two service plans in there. Yeah. Okay. And you compare it to Microsoft three six five e three, or even Microsoft three six five business standard. Yes. Yeah. Which is the lowest cost. You can't use it yet because we've got the 300 user uh, limit. limit. Yeah. There's nothing there that, mandate that supports Copilot. It's exactly the same. Look at the product scoops. Yeah. Yeah. Take the time and look at those service plans and uh, go down and find nothing. So this is just a callous exercise in marketing to force people to go to Microsoft 365 and away from Office 365. That's what it all is. It's always one of the most exciting topics to uh, talk about product licensing. So <laughs> I just, uh, I know that it, it's uh, no, it, it, so there are a couple other things. I do want to cover the time that we have left. There was also, I mean, other things that stood out. I mean, they also talked about SharePoint premium and SharePoint embedded thoughts on each of those. More money for Microsoft. <laughs> licensing discussion. And <laughs> so I, I, SharePoint Premium, I'm holding judgment. At the moment, it's a plain rename, bringing together SharePoint Asset Manager. I like the fact that the SharePoint names come back. That's kind of, it feels like they were trying to kill it off for many years. Now it's becoming more prominent and things like that. But I did like Syntex, so I kind of feel a little bit, a bit sad. I'm holding off, I think, until January. They've talked about a lot of the, the other things will be coming. So I'm, 
You know, one thing I just I, I do now, want to point out that. something just based on what you just said is that there's always been something quirky about this community over the last 20 years that I've been active within it uh, is that, you know, people look at, you know, oh, SharePoint was only talked about three times instead of 12 <laughs> times last event. What's going on with SharePoint? And lines. Viva was only brought up twice and last time it was 20 times. So what's going on with Viva? Yeah. started off with the 2.3 billion uh, documents. Yeah. He, he did start off with 2.3 billion documents yeah. daily. Daily in the SharePoint. But that's Teams. But can I ask, boy, tell me if I'm confused because... <laughs> No one knows, and that's part of the problem. Nope. I'll just say that sprawl, people, sprawl is a good thing. I think sprawl is a good thing. Wow. You must it, work for a company that specializes in eliminating. In, in governance, yes, yes. No, but s sprawl, I'll just, I'll just say this. Sorry, I'm going to do my live soapbox. Are you saying you don't need governance then? No, no. I'm saying that sprawl is an indication that the... That the yeah, sprawl is an indication that the technology is being used, not in the right way, not in the best way, but it's actually it's being used. I would rather be in an organization dealing with sprawl than one would try to convince people yeah. to use the technology. Okay, so you've never dealt with exchange public folders then? <laughs> I'm not an exchange guy. Yeah, right. Well, exchange public folders are the classic example of sprawl. Yeah. Yeah. We're still dealing with them, and they were introduced in 1996. Wow. Right, and there's a long-term solution. I just uh, yes, that's, that's that's coming up. No, it's promised. Uh, I don't think so. I think public folders are like the cockroaches of Exchange. They can never be eliminated. Oh, I'm not saying they're being eliminated. I'm saying that there's a Control there's a percentage. there's a new version. There's new something new on the the roadmap around it. I don't think so. Anyway, back yeah. to Tracy's anyway. point, which is really important. Yeah, it's really really important. All the stuff that Microsoft said today about Copilot and everything else and SharePoint Premium, all that stuff. How many of the 400 million monthly active users of Office 365 do these products affect? And the answer is, and the answer will they affect? Or will they affect? Yeah. And the answer is uh, the rich ones. The rich ones, yeah. exactly. Maybe 10 percent of the entire base. So you can see, even within the MVP community, there is uh, there's rich dialogue happening behind the scenes around uh, the, the various announcements. I, I think we'll we'll see that cascade down generally as things are, but with the right license on there. I, I don't think we'll see that co-pilot license be purely there. I think there will be subsets that start to be here. And I, I think, I can't remember before we were recording, you can build quite a few of these things yourselves. And we'll see those community powered, creating like a meetings transcript only custom co-pilot that you can use yourself. And you're just then paying for the consumption usage of that. We'll see build, people building stuff that will just look at your team's messages and give you that. So if you want just that small bit, there'll be ways for you to do that uh, as well. And then Microsoft will go, actually, we better do that as well. Oh, absolutely. But we'll see people create ones that you can lift and make use of. So we'll see that slowly cascade down to more people as well. Right. I, uh, I've picked up a lot of uh, positive aggression. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but that's what's needed. I thought so uh, just my part for ending on a positive note, and that's because of this beautiful orange carpet that we're on. Did you know that Brad Binder made third place in the MotoGP from South Africa, KTM? I'm just saying that. So there's a positive note for today. <laughs> and over to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can say, yeah. I can say nothing more about that. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate everybody for watching this, of course. Ta go take a look at the keynote, uh, the recordings out of the ESPC website uh, for to find out what we've been talking about. And what do you think about all this? Uh, sh please share your feedback, let us know. Reach out to us individually. What's your email, Tony? <laughs> people, can't, people can't find me by now. Oh, I'm sorry. They need, no, they they need to. Find yeah. Well, thank you everybody for participating in this discussion. Thanks, it's great. Thank you, Christy. Thanks a lot.